Light sheet fluorescence microscopy is a fluorescence microscopy technique with an intermediate optical resolution, but good optical sectioning capabilities and high speed. In contrast to epifluorescence microscopy only a thin slice of the sample is illuminated perpendicularly to the direction of observation. For illumination, a laser light sheet is used, that is a laser beam which is focused only in one direction. A second method uses a circular beam scanned in one direction to create the light sheet. As only the actually observed section is illuminated, this method reduces the photo damage and stress induced on a living sample. Also the good optical sectioning capability reduces the background signal and thus creates images with higher contrast, comparable to confocal microscopy. Because LSFM scans samples by using a plane of light instead of a point, it can acquire images at speeds 100 to 1000 times faster than those offered by point scanning methods. This method is used in cell biology and for microscopy of whole living creatures, such as embryos. It is now often used for the long-time observation of embryonal development in different model organisms. Starting in 1994, LSFM was developed as orthogonal plane fluorescence optical sectioning microscopy or tomography mainly for large samples and later as the selective single plane illumination microscopy also with subcellular resolution. This introduced an illumination scheme into fluorescence microscopy which has already been used successfully for dark field microscopy under the name ultramicroscopy. Setup of LSFM equals basic setup equals In this type of microscopy, the illumination is done perpendicularly to the direction of observation. The expanded beam of a laser is focused in only one direction by a cylindrical lens, or by a combination of a cylindrical lens and a microscope objective as the latter is available in better optical quality and with higher numerical aperture than the first. This way a thin sheet of light or light sheet is created in the focal region that can be used to excite fluorescence only in a thin slice of the sample. The fluorescence light emitted from the light sheet is then collected perpendicularly with a standard microscope objective and projected onto an imaging sensor. In order to let enough space for the excitation optics light sheet an observation objective with high working distance is used. In most LSFMs the detection objective and sometimes also the excitation objective are fully immersed in the sample buffer, so usually the sample and excitation detection optics are embedded into a buffer-filled sample chamber, which can also be used to control the environmental conditions during the measurement. The sample mounting in LSFM is described below in more detail. As both the excitation light sheet and the focal plane of the detection optics have to coincide to form an image, Focusing different parts of the sample cannot be done by translating the detection objective, but usually the whole sample is translated and rotated instead. Equals extensions of the basic LSFM idea equals, in recent years, several extensions to this scheme have been developed. The use of two counter-propagating light sheets helps to reduce typical SPIM artifacts, like shadowing, in addition to counter-propagating light sheets a setup with detection from two opposing sides has been proposed in 2012. This allows measurement of Z and rotation stacks for a full 3D reconstruction of the sample more rapidly. The light sheet can also be created by scanning a normal laser focus up and down. This also allows use of self-reconstructing beams for the illumination which improve the penetration of the light sheet into thick samples as the negative effect of scattering on the light sheet is reduced. In oblique plane microscopy the detection objective is used to also create the light sheet, the light sheet is now emitted from this objective under an angle of about 60 a degree. Additional optics is used to also tilt the focal plane used for detection by the same angle. LSFM has also been combined with two photon excitation, which improves the penetration into thick and scattering samples. SPIM can also be combined with techniques such as fluorescence correlation spectroscopy, to allow spatially resolved mobility measurements of fluorescing particles inside living biological samples. Also a combination of a SPIM microscope with a gated image intensifier camera has been reported that allowed measuring a map of fluorescence lifetimes. LSFM was combined with super-resolution microscopy techniques to improve its resolution beyond the Abbe limit. 
also a combination of stimulated emission depletion microscopy and SPIM has been published, that leads to a reduced light sheet thickness due to the STED effect. See also the section on the power of resolution of LSFM below. Equals sample mounting equals. The separation of the illumination and detection beam paths in LSFM creates a need for specialized sample mounting methods. To date most LSFMs are built in such a way that the illumination and detection beam path lie in a horizontal plane, thus the sample is usually hanging from the top into the sample chamber or is resting on a vertical support inside the sample chamber. Several methods have been developed to mount all sorts of samples, fixed samples can be glued to a simple support or holder and can stay in their fixing solution during imaging. Larger living organisms are usually sedated and mounted in a soft gel cylinder that is extruded from a capillary hanging from above into the sample chamber. Adherent cells can be grown on small glass plates that are hanging in the sample chamber. Plants can be grown in clear gels containing a growth medium. The gels are cut away at the position of imaging, so they do not reduce the light sheet and image quality by scattering and absorption. Liquid samples can be mounted in small bags made of thin plastic foil matching the refractive index of the surrounding immersion medium in the sample chamber. Some LSFMs have been developed where the sample is mounted as in standard microscopy and the excitation and detection optics are constructed in an upright plane from above. This also allows combining a LSFM with a standard inverted microscope and avoids the requirement for specialized sample mounting procedures. LSFM image properties equals typical imaging modes equals most LSFMs are used to produce 3D images of the sample by moving the sample through the image plane. If the sample is larger than the field of view of the image sensor, the sample also has to be shifted laterally. An alternative approach is to move the image plane through the sample to create the image stack. Long experiments can be carried out. For example with stacks is recorded every 10 10 minutes over the time span of days. This allows study of changes over time in 3D, or so-called 4D microscopy. After the image acquisition the different image stacks are registered to form one single 3D dataset. Multiple views of the sample can be collected either by interchanging the roles of the objectives or by rotating the sample. Having multiple views can yield more information than a single stack. For example occlusion of some parts of the sample may be overcome. Multiple views also improves 3D image resolution by overcoming poor axial resolution as described below. Some studies also use a SPIM to image only one slice of the sample, but at much higher temporal resolution. This allows for example to observe the beating heart of a zebra fish embryo in real time. Together with fast translation stages for the sample a high-speed 3D particle tracking has been implemented. Equals power of resolution equals, the lateral resolution of a SPIM is comparable to that of a standard fluorescence microscope, as it is determined fully by the detection objective and the wavelength of the detected light. For example for detection in the green spectral region around 525 nanometers, a resolution of 250 to 500 nanometers can be reached. The axial resolution is worse than the lateral, but it can be improved by using a thinner light sheet in which case nearly isotropic resolution is possible. Thinner light sheets are either thin only in a small region or else specialized beam profiles such as Bessel beams must be used. Alternatively, Isotropic resolution can be achieved by computationally combining 3D image stacks taken from the same sample under different angles. Then the depth resolution information lacking in one stack is supplied from another stack. For example with two orthogonal stacks the axial direction in one stack is a lateral direction in the other stack. The lateral resolution of LSFM can be improved beyond the Abbe limit, by using super-resolution microscopy techniques. For example with using the fact, that single fluorophores can be located with much higher spatial precision than the nominal resolution of the used optical system. Also structured illumination techniques have been applied to further improve the optical sectioning capacity of LSFM. Equals stripe artifacts equals. As the illumination typically penetrates the sample from one side, Obstacles lying in the way of the light sheet can disturb its quality by scattering and or absorbing the light. 
This typically leads to dark and bright stripes in the images. If parts of the samples have a significantly higher refractive index, they can also lead to a focusing effect resulting in bright stripes behind these structures. To overcome this artifact, the light sheets can for example be pivoting. That means that the light sheet's direction of incidence is changed rapidly by a few degrees, so light also hits the regions behind the obstacles. In addition illumination can be performed with two light sheets to further reduce these artifacts. History At the beginning of the 20th century, R. A. Zygmondi introduced the ultramicroscope as a new illumination scheme into dark field microscopy. Here sunlight or a white lamp is used to illuminate a precision slit. The slit is then imaged by a condenser lens into the sample to form a light sheet. Scattering particles can be observed perpendicularly with a microscope. This setup allowed the observation of particles with sizes smaller than the microscope's resolution and led to a Nobel Prize for Zygmondi in 1925. The first application of this illumination scheme for fluorescence microscopy was published in 1993 by Voyeal. Under the name Orthogonal Pane Fluorescence Optical Sectioning. For imaging of the internal structure of the cochlea. The resolution at the time was limited to 10 a micrometer laterally and 26 a micrometer longitudinally but at a sample size in the millimeter range. The OPFOS microscope used a simple cylindrical lens for illumination. Further development and improvement of the SPIM started in 2004. After this publication by Huisk and AL, the technique found wide application and is still adapted to new measurement situations today. Since 2010 a first ultramicroscope with fluorescence excitation and limited resolution and since 2012 a first SPIM are available commercially. A good overview about the development of SPIM is given in REF. During 2012 also open source projects have started to appear that freely publish complete construction plans for LSFMs and also the required software suites. Application SPIM LSFM is often used in developmental biology, where it enables long-time observations of embryonal development. SPIM can also be combined with techniques, like fluorescence correlation spectroscopy to allow spatially resolved mobility measurements of fluorescing particles inside living biological samples. References Further reading, review, P.A. Santi. Light Sheet Fluorescence Microscopy, a review. Journal of Histochemistry and Cytochemistry 59, 129 a Euro 138 doi, 10.1369-0022155410394857. ISSN 0022-1554. Review of different LSFM modalities and results in developmental biology, Huisken, J. Stania. DY are selective plane illumination microscopy techniques in developmental biology. Development 136, 1963 Euro 1975. DOI 10.1242 Dev 02242 ISSN 0950-1991. PMC 2685720. PMID 19465594. Retrieved October 27, 2012. Review of LSFM for Imaging Anatomic Structures, Byte et, J. Descamps, M. Eilly. Adrienz, Dominique. DISCKX, Jiras JJ. The OPFOS Microscopy Family, High Resolution Optical Sectioning of Biomedical Specimens. Anatomy Research International 2012, 206,238 Euro, 1 Euro 9, DOI, 10.1155206238. Editorial, Method of the Year 2014. Nature Methods 12, 1. December 30, 2014. DOI, 10.1038 Myth 3251. External links. Video of a typical experiment in developmental biology, using a SPIM on YouTube, the linked video showed the development of a fruit fly embryo, which was recorded during 20 hours. Two projections of the full 3D dataset are shown. Template, Ultramicroscopy HTTP, 
www.plozone.org metrics 10.1371 slash journal poem 0125418